Hello and welcome to the Thursday DC Today. If my voice sounds a little bit hoarse, it's because the Pacific uh, Christian Tritons are the San Joaquin League champions as of last night. Outright league champs and, uh, you know, perhaps I was there and perhaps my voice got a little use. But more importantly, it was a, a really interesting day of markets. The day after Fed Day, I actually saw a rally continuation. And I love something that has happened. And some people aren't going to understand this. Um, a bunch of stocks are getting hit really hard right now after market. And a bunch of stocks were up huge today during market. And it's all company specific. So you have the largest social media company in the world was up 23% today alone. And as I'm talking after hours, and by the way, this could rotate later because that happens from time to time um, in the immediate aftermath of the, of the futures market. Um, and, and, you know, aftermarket activities are not always as reliable. But um, I'm going to check the update as I'm speaking here. But you have a rather significant revenue decline at Apple is the largest company in the world. And I bring it up because it's in the, uh, the media right now. And you had uh, idiosyncratic or bottom-up fundamental news that is not being well received by the largest e-commerce retailer in the world and the largest search engine. So these are big tech companies all down. And you got other big tech companies that were up. And my point is, that's not about the Fed. And that's what I mean why it's, it's reasonably positive to see the market acting in that more idiosyncratic and bottom-up way. Uh, uh, it is Darwinian. Some companies are, are responding well to unexpected good news. Other companies are responding poorly to unexpected bad news. And, and that's interesting for a day after the Fed. I want to continue checking numbers as we're speaking. But so far, everything I said is holding up. You have, you have and, and we'll see what it does tomorrow. But some of these companies that have reported today are, are getting hit, you know, 3, 4, 5% down. And yet the NASDAQ today was up substantially in the middle of the day. And that was largely off of some other companies that had, had positive news. So um, let me stick with what we're doing here. The Dow was actually down 39 points, um, but it had been down 275 at the low. And, you, you know, the Dow has marches to the beat of its own drum. The S&P was up 1.5%. The NASDAQ was up 3 and a quarter. So just a really big rally in risk assets, primarily communication services, the best uh, performing company of the day, uh, sector of the day. And um, consumer discretionary was right behind it, number two. So, you know, kind of a risk on day for the lower quality sectors, if I can be so, you know, simplistic. Uh, the worst performing sector was energy. Energy's been in a little bit of a lag for a few days. And I do notice several healthcare companies were down today as well. Oil itself was at 75.80 a barrel, so just down, you know, 0.8%. Um, the 10-year treasury was flat. Let me check where the rest of the yield curve closed. I think it stayed constant there. But you did have the 10-year treasury close at 3.4%, basically where it came in. And let's see here. Yeah, you were really close to flat, like less than a basis point of move across the term structure other than the six month was down three and a half basis points and the one month down six and a half. So you got a little rally in the short end of the curve. Um, but, you know, like I said, just tremendous things happening in the bond market and really not a big surprise in my humble opinion. So um, what else do I want to go through today? Uh, the Fed level uh, was sort of drowned out by both the Bank of England and the European Central Bank, both of which raised rates 50 basis points this morning. Um, but then the Bank of England made a comment uh, in their rate announcement about believing that the risks of a severe recession have come way off. And so they're really starting to talk up the soft landing thing, too. So we live in interesting times uh, jobless claims were better than expected. Um, productivity was better than expected. It came in at 3% for the fourth quarter annualized. And the unit labor cost, which of course, you know, are affected by productivity, um, they were up 1.1%, but 1.5% had been expected. And uh, rising productivity aided in that number. 
So lower unit labor cost comes from greater productivity. You follow me? They're inversely related. That's about it. I don't want to pour more on. I have such a meaty and exciting Dividend Cafe coming tomorrow. Um, I haven't completed writing it as I'm talking to you right now, but I've written a lot of it. And I love writing Dividend Cafe every week, but I, have, I really have enjoyed writing this one. And I hope you'll enjoy it. It's an incredibly important macroeconomic reality and it's not uh it is a little contrarian there are not um it is not a consensus viewpoint but we're going to share it tomorrow about the uh macroeconomic reality of japanification deflation old terms that i've been talking about forever that i'm updating some perspective on in the meantime thank you for listening to watching and reading the dc today mm -hmm.